All right, there they go. It's time. It's time for a secret project. I'll take y'all with me, but you gotta promise not to say anything. All right, follow me. So for this Project Friday, we are actually going to be doing four separate items. These are Christmas gifts for Caitlin. Um, this is probably going to take me all oh, over a period of a few days to do. Um, I'm on the weekend now. It's a little cold out here tonight. I'm doing other things, so I'm actually not going to start this on Friday night for Friday night projects, but I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, Caitlin and Carol are going to a CAP event. So I'll come out in the garage and start working on some of this. Um, probably a lot of it, if I don't finish it tomorrow, will just be done quietly and I'll do voiceovers. If uh, Caitlin's in the house, I'll just kind of work on the sly in the garage. She won't come out here and know what's going on, hopefully. But um, we're going to be turning... Uh, two pizza spatulas of different styles. We have a pizza cutter and we also have a corkscrew. Why Caitlin needs a corkscrew, I don't think I want to know, but hey, it'll work. Um, this is the good quality pizza cutter. I've um, done a couple of these kits. This baby is heavy. I mean, that's some weight there. So looking forward to finishing that. We're using plastic spindle blanks, and uh, this will go with her other set of measuring cups and measuring spoons that we've already done for her, and uh, hopefully these will match. The um, problem is going to be on this kit, I actually need two pen blanks, so... Needless to say, I'm going to end up cutting this in half, and I'm going to be turning a lot of meat off of that one. But, hopefully, it'll all go well. I'll see you when we get started. Well, hello. Here's something you don't see very often. The top of my workbench. Don't worry, though. I've got plenty lined up and waiting to get back on here. But, while i got it clear, I need to address this project. So the first thing I want to do is read my directions thoroughly and try to figure out what it is that I have to do on these four separate kits. Now, two of these kits are going to be the same. They're just a little bit different in the finished product, but they're built the same way, same set of instructions. This one, I have to drill an 11 32nd hole two and a half inches deep in one side of these blocks. So I have my drill bit ready for that one. This kit, I'm going to change the way the directions have me do it. What the directions want is when I turn it, they want to use, well, two inches worth of this as waste material. And for me to turn the end, right into about here and part this end off. But I don't want to do that. I want to use the whole block for what this is. So what I'm going to do is ignore the waste block section on this, but I'm going to drill a half inch hole in either end, one and a half inches deep, roughly. Now, the depth in all of these doesn't really matter. Uh, it, you just want it deep enough where you don't bottom out the fitting that you're putting in there. This last one's going to be a little trickier. This one, I have to glue in two tubes, seven millimeter. So what I'm going to end up having to do is cut this down there and there, and then drill a seven millimeter hole in the center of each block, glue this up and treat this like you would any other tubing kit. So, I guess the first step in all of this is gonna be cut this one down to size. For this step, 
I'm going to choose to do this over on my big DeWalt chop saw because the block's so big and I think it's safer than that little one. I could also do this by hand, but I think we'll just do it on this chop saw for today. So what I'm going to do is take the tube and I want to mark extra meat on both ends because this will be dressed down on the disc grinder right next door to me right up flush with the tube but you want to have some room to work you know in case you blow out a little bit or you know mess up the ends you just want a little extra room so i'm going to do one cut at a time because of the carf so i mark that one out and i take into account the carf of the blade i actually sight down on my right side i want my line to be visible on the right side beyond the blade. Okay, loud noise warning, here we go. Okay, and there's the first one. Perfect. And now we're gonna do the same thing. I could technically do the other end because I know that that's square from the factory. But I know that this saw is tuned pretty good and it's pretty accurate to 90 degrees, so I don't think it matters. I'm just going to mark it right there. Actually, let me mark this with an X because I know that's my way, so I don't get confused. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. I'm kind of at the edge of my fence here and I'm awful close. Am I confident enough to hold this? If not, my option is to grab a clamp. And I'm pretty confident, but let's go ahead and grab a clamp so I can demonstrate that. Now the saw is equipped with clamps too, but I just like using, I just like using these DeWalt clamps. And I'm just going to basically clamp that thing down into place where it's not going to move. Sight again, make sure I'm within my line. Easy as that. Always make sure you have a nice sharp blade going on too. And then I got a nice little waste block and decide what to do with that. Now let's go ahead and drill this one out on the lathe. I usually would use the next door lathe for drilling, but because I have my camera mount on my work lathe, I'm gonna go ahead and use that one. I questioned whether my pen jaws were gonna be big enough, but they are just so. And go ahead and get that mounted up. Usually square blanks, I don't generally lock down, but this one's big enough. I'm going to lock that down. Grab a 7 millimeter bit. Set up for diamond painting pens at the moment. Okay. Lock that down. See, see the Morse taper in the Quill, so it's not. Now, I can look at my tube, how far am I going to have to go, and I got plenty of drill. Well, you can't see with my finger in the way, but just kind of judging. So I got plenty of drill. I'll be able to get through the block with that. So I park the drill up close, turn on the lathe, and I'm doing 2000 RPM. I certainly don't want to go that fast. On plastic, you're going to burn and melt the plastic. I'm actually going to back that down to about you know, 800, 900, close. All right, let me back it out. See how that hardened up? It's actually drilling pretty nicely though. Let me back it out. 
Again, clean the flutes out. Give it some time to cool off. It is a balmy 36 degrees right now in this garage, so shouldn't have much problem cooling off. And that's it, I'm through. Oh, and it's we're starting to Yeah, that plastic melts around the bit. Just go ahead and take it out. Trial fit, and we are good. I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. This one, the directions say we need a half inch hole. One and a half inches deep on one end and three inches deep on the other end. But I'm gonna go ahead and change the way I do this. So I'm just gonna drill each end one and a half inches. And that should be good for the first end. And again, it's not a precise measurement. As long as you have clearance in there for what you're putting in the hole, it'll be good. Now, the only drawback on this one is this will be a see-through blank. You can see the hole. So you don't want to go real deep. But it's one of the things I have to deal with. And I think in this case, we'll just fill it with epoxy and just gonna be visible. Okay. Change over real quick. Now I gotta keep my head straight because I am filming right now. And I've done this before where you get carried away and I go to drill. It's like okay, now I'm drilling again. No, stop. I don't wanna half inch hole. I need to change my bit. I generally tend to make it a habit to change the bit first and then mount the block for that reason. Again, I've, um, I've been known to do that. It's just you get on autopilot sometimes and you just get carried away and you start doing things before you realize what you're doing. It's a danger when you do repetitive things. Let me move my quill back a little bit here. There we go. Now these, refresh my memory once again. I'm constantly looking at the directions so I don't make a mistake. I want a 1132nd size hole two and a half inches deep on one end. And that's for both of these. They're the same directions. So I'm only going to do the one end. And what did I say? Two and a half? Two and a half inches deep. Which is pretty deep. As a matter of fact, take a quick measurement just to orient myself two and a half inches with a little bit extra clearance would come up almost to the end of the flutes let's see where we're at a little bit more right up there oops wrong one
And last one. Wow, is that just a little bit bigger than the last one was, I guess. Interesting. Okay. Same thing, two and a half inches. Give or take a 64th. Okay. I remember making one project for a friend of my dad's who's a machinist. And I'm thinking to myself, oh boy, I do everything. I mean, I've got, I've got tools, I've got calipers and such, you know, and you have to use them occasionally, but when you're turning this kind of stuff, most of it's just by eye. I mean, it's like that with a lot of jobs. You just work with the tolerances at your job. You know, if you're a framing carpenter, you're probably working to 30 seconds at the best, probably just around eighth. You know, if you're a machinist, you're working to thousands. So, depends on what you're doing. All right, let's go ahead and prep the tubes for the first project. This is our trusty Rockler lathe. This is the lathe we started on. This was the lathe I bought Patrick for Christmas back, oh good Lord, that must have been eight years ago now, something like that. It's pretty much relegated to tube scuffing duty at this point. I use it for CA finishes occasionally and various other things, but it hardly sees any use anymore. Would I recommend this lathe for a beginner? That's a hard question. Here's the thing. It's a good little lathe, but it is janky. It's not precise. For a beginner, yes, it's adequate to turn on. It's, I mean, I would not suggest anything be below this. This is like the bottom of the barrel that I would suggest for a beginning turner. Yes, you can learn and you can successfully turn on this lathe, but if you can afford the Jet 1221, I highly suggest going that route. You get what you pay for, bottom line. And again, this is still running after all these years. It's a trusty little lathe, but it lacks a lot of precision. It lacks a lot of control. About what I can say to that one. Painting, what's to say about painting? Cold weather, we keep the paint inside the house where it's nice and warm. Shake the can real good. Watch the overspray. Turn the block rather than your body. And you just want a nice, light, thorough coat. How many times do I say thorough? Mixed thoroughly, thorough coat. But... A good coat. We'll let it dry. And let's mix some epoxy. I use 30 minute slow epoxy to give me time when I'm doing large batches. This batch won't necessarily matter. And a little white alumilite pigment just to color it. I probably got a bit too much pigment in there. You don't want to add too much, it gets gummy. But it'll be all right. Mix it up real good. And what's the word of the day? Thorough. A thorough coating. And then you just work it in and out a little bit and spread that glue around. 
use a clean toothpick. I'll take the excess off. No point in having it drip. And stick the tube down inside in the middle. Oops. And tube number two. Might as well try to use it all up. Most of it will just come right back out anyway. Again, you want to make sure you got a nice, even coating. Take off the excess. This hole is a little loose. It's actually sinking. All right. We'll let that dry inside the house where it's nice and warm. Oh, hi. I've just been editing this one down. I've got 20 minutes of footage. I don't want to make a big epic movie out of this, so I'm going to make a part two. So I'm going to let this one go for now. Come back next Project Friday and see the, see the finale of this one.